Built in 1927 as the Gallo Opera House, Studio 54 has one of the most fascinating histories of any Broadway theater. Because the theater was built as an opera house that would rival the Met, it was very, very lavish. So you walk through a very long hall with mirrors and marble. It's as if you're entering into a palace. The ornament that you see in both the lobby and in the interior of the theater is the original, and it's weathered all the different changes to the building. Over the years, the theater reinvented itself many times, including a period from the 40s to the 60s when it became a successful CBS television studio for programs like Captain Kangaroo, The Johnny Carson Show, and What's My Line? In 1977, after years of neglect, restaurateurs Steve Rubell and Ian Schrager turned the theater into a star-studded disco. As I got to know Studio 54 more and know people who came to it, it's a kind of all-encompassing, you know, everyone was welcome. Well, that's not true. Every, the whole range of society was welcomed once you got in. In 1986, the disco closed and Studio 54 fell into disrepair. Then, in 1998, a crane accident next to the Henry Miller's Theater forced the Roundabout Theater Company to find a new Broadway home for their Tony Award-winning revival of Cabaret. And at that precise moment, we heard that Studio 54 was available. So we built an exact replica of the set that we had at the Henry Miller's Theater and we installed it at Studio 54. Over one weekend, we moved the show. Set in a Berlin nightclub during the 1920s, Cabaret integrated the theater itself into the show. The idea that we were doing a play which is set in a club that's about performance and kind of sexuality and progressive thinking and a little bit naughty and subversive, that we were doing a show about that in a place that was also completely that, had that aesthetic and feel to it. It was perfect. William Ivy Long designed costumes to match the tone of the musical. That means underwear, that means torn underwear, that means is it going to fall off underwear? Where do you cut the underwear? How baggy are your boxer shorts? And then the makeup, are those bite marks or track marks? So uh, it's not every show that asks you those questions. I really felt that the costumes disappeared into the person's performance. Hello. You did not notice what they were wearing. You felt they brought it from home. That was who they were. What started out as a risky venture turned into a huge success. It ended up running for six years and gave birth to a new Broadway theater. With the money made from Cabaret, the Roundabout was able to purchase Studio 54 and present a variety of shows that fit the character of the theater. Because it is kind of cool and art deco and distressed in a certain way, it lends itself to certain things. In 2007, Studio 54 presented a revival of Terence McNally's gay bathhouse farce, The Ritz, with lighting by Jules Fisher. Lighting for the Ritz at Studio 54 was to make something bright and glitzy and flashy that you were in on all these little secret affairs and trysts that were taking place in the rooms. The plays and musicals produced by the Roundabout Theater Company at Studio 54 have made the theater a welcome addition to the Broadway landscape and a home for artists from around the world. I didn't come to America at all until I was 30. I think I was 33 when I did Cabaret. And it's like I had this rebirth almost in, in terms of my life, you know, that now New York is my home. So that was the best thing about, about it. If I hadn't been for Cabaret, I may never have got that. Mm -hmm.